Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Trofin, it's a babbling Belgian and welcome back to Gwent Edge, the show where we talk about interesting decks to play around with. And today is no different as the start of the season of the Draconid and the new Tanet Coup expansion has arrived. We're going to be heading into its what appears to be at least its strongest deck. It has received a single nerf already, but we're gonna go into monsters regardless, because uh, we're gonna take a look at the new uh, monster cards and build a very fancy deck out of that. So today's deck is called Who Has My Money? But yeah, it's supposed to be pronounced Mamuna, but uh, I just like the pun I made there. Um, yeah, I, I feel like I'm entitled to a pun every now and then. So, um, that's the reason we're going to be using Mamuna. We're going to also be using the Bloody Mistress, so plenty of the new cards. This is basically a Thrive Engine deck, um, which can reach immense heights if you play this correctly and you don't get hard countered immediately, but it is extremely powerful. If you know what this deck already does, um, feel free to go to the example matches using the timeline down below in one go and I'll see you right over there. For everybody who is still interested, I'm gonna go through each and every single card in this deck one by one, explaining what each card does and what the possible combos are with the other cards in the deck. So the first card is the Necker. So this little monster guy has uh, one power for four provisions, has Thrive. So Thrive means that every time you play a unit that is of a higher power than this card, he will boost himself by one. And on deploy, the Necker spawns a base copy of himself and summons it to the row. So you always get two Neckers for the price of one, both of which have Thrive. So once you play another unit, this card will go to 4, another unit to 6, 8, 10, and so on and so forth. So possibly a very high point total, pretty strong card for 4 provisions. And then of course we want to trigger that drive, so we have a lot of higher powered units as well. So the Kitimora Worker is one of those, 7 power with 4 armor for 4 provisions, but has a deficit. When its armor is removed, it destroys itself. But when you put it on the Melibro and you play another Insectoid, you also gain an armor back. So, pretty balanced card, 7, 4, 4, but of course can be destroyed by 4 damage. And we have two natural selection cards in this deck to have a little bit of damage output. A special organic card, which allows you to damage an enemy unit by 4. And if you damage, you kill a unit that has less than 4 damage, you spawn drones in an allied row. Uh, equal to the amount of excess damage. So if you kill a unit of two power with this card, you gain two Andrega drones, um, well, Arakas drones uh, instead. So that's pretty balanced. Always a four, four, four. Then a double witch apprentice. You're going to be seeing this a lot. There's a lot of relics in this deck. Not as many as you see in most other variations on this deck, but still plenty to uh, whet your appetite. The witch apprentice, four power for five provisions and on Sabbath. Sabbath meaning that you need to have a row of 25 points or more. At the end of your turn, boost yourself by two. So basically a uh, five provision beast that uh, doesn't really care about whatever your opponent is playing or whatever high unit you have. She will always boost herself by two if you have Sabbat enabled. Then another relic, Gun Keon for five power for five provisions. And on the play, you increase this unit's base power by two for each adjacent relic. A very powerful card that um, often plays for nine points uh, for five provisions, which is really good. It's also a relic, so you could technically use this for your next gun, Kian, to also uh, follow that relic pocket that you'll be needing to give this uh, nine power. But even though if you do only have one relic, seven for five is still very powerful. And of course, this card will trigger a lot of tribes on the board as well. Next up is one of our utility cards, the Nagelfar's Taskmaster, 5 points for 5 provisions and allows you to purify an enemy unit. If you have dominance or if you have the most powerful unit on the board, you purify a unit instead. So you can purify one of your own units as well in case something was locked or poisoned or something like that. Now we have a double griffin, also 9 power for 5 provisions, but you need to destroy an allied unit on the same row if you want to play this card. If you don't have a target available to destroy this card will destroy itself so you need to be careful to have at least something very small to uh, let the griffin take it out because the griffin is always hungry that uh, magnificent beast needs a bit of food to be able to be played then another utility card, Maxi van Dekker, 6 power for 5 provisions and on deploy you look at your deck in order from top to the bottom and you can choose whether to shuffle your deck 
and then put a card on the bottom of it. So you can choose. If you see, okay, my deck is looking really good. The order of the cards is really good. I'm going to leave it like that. You don't need to select a card. You can just stop and you know the exact order that your deck will be in. If you don't want to have your deck in that order, if there's a lot of crappy bronze cards at the top, you can uh, shuffle your deck and choose one of those cards to put at the bottom. So you're absolutely certain that you will no longer pull that card. So a very powerful card that allows you a bit of leeway, a bit of preparation in uh, that pass round as well. And of course, we're playing Drive. Two Andrega Larvals can't be omitted. So two power and one armor for six provisions. Uh, has Drive and on deploy basically the same thing as the Neka. You spawn a base copy of this unit and summon it to this row. So this unit starts at four and then six, eight, ten, and you know the gist by now. And then one of the new cards, Self Eater, a relic of six power and six provisions. We talked about this in the card review, but I'll try to explain this again. So this card has an order ability, meaning you need to wait a turn for this card to be able to be used. On order, you half this unit's base power. So if you have him at six, he will go to three power and then spawn a copy with the same base power next to it. So you have three and three. And all of those have a possibility that whenever you play a relic, you increase this unit's base power by one. So basically thrive without it needing to be a unit that is higher than this card. Now, that sounds interesting, but I've only included one, even though it says times two, that's because I have two in my deck builder. But I only inclu included one because the problem with this card is your opponent can always uh, stop the train from going. Because the copy is the only one that has the order ability. So if you want to keep copying them, um, that final card needs to stay alive, which is not often going to be the case. On top of that, it also takes a while for this card to get going. You start at six. If you split him once, he goes to 3-3, three, three, and then you play a Relic, 4-4, four, four, so that's 8. Then the next turn, you split the final one, which is now at 4 to 2 and 2. That gives you still 8 points, of course, but then with another Relic, that goes up to 11, because that goes 5-3-3, uh, three, three, and then so on and so forth. I think it increases to 15 and then further starts snowballing. But of course, your opponent can stop this at any time. If they uh, feel like they want to stop this train, they just destroy the most right self eater that has the active order ability and the train will stop especially because the most right one would also be the most weakest one so usually going to be two three power uh so yeah it is very handy to get you an immediate relic pocket for gun kiam though so especially in the first round this is a very very good card to just start rolling but in a longer round three this card is basically useless because it also fills your board really quickly and you don't want to have that with this deck as you'll see in a second. Then of course, we talked about it a little bit already, the beast is in this deck as well. So four power for seven provisions. And at the end of your turn, if this unit is not the highest unit on the battlefield, so the, power, uh, the unit with the highest power, um, this card will boost itself by two. So as long as there is a unit that is higher than this card, this card will boost itself by two at the end of every one of your turns. And then another BV card, the Red Catcher S, another Relic for 9 power for nine uh, for 7 provisions. Then whenever this unit is damaged, you also reduce its base power by 1. But if you have Sabbath, so again, a row of 25 points or less, um, or, or more, more, definitely more, you cancel the ability above, so the damage ability. But the other passive ability is whenever you play a Relic, you increase this unit's base power by 1. So basically the same as what the self eater does but of course with the caveat that you need to have sabbat if you want to avoid double dipping on damage because every time you take damage you lose also a base power so that's another damage on top of that if you don't have sabbat then the mimi card in this deck this this card is really cool so six power for eight provisions Idaran of ulivo the first time you spawn a unit each turn on your side of the board you spawn a one power copy of it on this row and give it doomed which means that every time we spawn a second Necker, um, a second Andrega Larva, this card will spawn another one as well. This also works on the Self Eater, by the way. So if you split the Self Eater up, that spawns a three base power Self Eater, but Idaran will spawn another one. So Idaran works with a lot of cards in this deck, and this is why you don't want to fill up your board too quickly, because Idaran is very good at doing that as well. Try to double up on the drive units, that is going to be very, very powerful. And there's another card that this card works very well with, and that's going to be Garantir in a minute. And there we go, we have Garantir immediately, because so it does work very well with this card. So if you don't have any units spawned just yet, 
play Garantir on one of the gold cards that we'll talk about in a minute. Uh, there's two very good targets for this, but if you don't have those two, you can also use the Beast. Um, and if you have Idran on the board, the copy that Garantir makes, so the one power base copy of a monster unit from your hand, will also be copied by Idran. So basically, if you use this on the Beast as a good example right now, um, you will get two beasts in one go, because Idran will also spawn a beast, and those beasts will spawn them, boost themselves to three after that, because Garantir is always far, four power, so they will go higher. Then there's a very special addition. This is basically to protect you from mirror matches. So Glusty Warp, six power, and on deploy, destroy all units with one power. For each unit destroyed, you boost yourself by two. It doesn't really have a use in this deck on its own, but it's very good in melee matches. If you're not interested in this card in the slightest, you can also swap it out for Immigrant's Wrath, giving you just a very high-powered uh, damage hit. Um, but I like to add this because it's really funny if you play a melee match because you can destroy your opponent's tactics in one fell swoop. Then we have the Cave Troll, 7 power, 4 armor and the defender status so can protect an entire row from targeted attacks for 9 provisions. So definitely going to come in handy to protect some of the cards that we want to really play because those are going to come up next. Not just yet, we still have Nagelfar first for 9 provisions. Look at 2 random gold cards from your deck then play one and place another on top. So ideally you want to play this in round 1 or 2 so you know what the next golden card is. You guarantee that next golden card pool. Unless you're playing Nilfgaard of course because they will uh, probably take it with Karant uh, Kantarella instead. But very good tutor card that allows you to just pull one of your golds from your deck and then just uh, prepare for the next card you're going to pull. And there we go, we have the Karantir target. So remember Karantir plays a 1 power copy of a unit from your hand. A monster unit from your hand, so you can't double up on Idaran, by the way, because Idaran is a neutral. But Mamuna, this is the card that the deck was called, uh, well, was named after. Two power for 10 provisions, not a lot, but has a zealed order ability. So an order ability she can use immediately. On order, you banish a bronze unit from your graveyard and boost self by its powers. For example, you have a griffin in the graveyard, you boost Mamuna to 11. Then you summon a copy of it from this deck, from your deck to this row. So if you, that's why we have two Griffins, we have two Andrega Larva, um, we have two Gan Kians and two Witch Apprentices. Those are all the targets for Mamuna. You just thin your deck as well. So you summon a copy from your deck to this row. If you have Sabbath, you play that card instead. So very powerful for basically all of those cards aside from the Witch Apprentice. The Witch Apprentice is probably the best if you don't have Sabbath yet. Because, um, yeah, the Witch Apprentice will just, doesn't really have a deployability. The Andrega Larvas, Gan Kian, all have a um, deployability. So you want to be playing that copy so you can benefit from the deployability as well. Mamuna itself is a relic as well. So that works very well with uh, Gan Kian again. And uh, yeah, doesn't really lose a lot of power from being a one power copy by Karanti. Because you only lose one point. And it's just basically another Mamuna. And who doesn't want more Mamuna? Look how friendly she is to that small child. She's definitely not abducting in her cape. I, I, lo I love this artwork, by the way. And then, of course, the card that has been nerfed already. Um, the Bloody Mistress. 7 power for 10 provisions. So if you play her with Karanti, it looks like you have a lot more loss because you lose 6 points because it's going to be a 1 power copy. Um, originally this card then transformed into Gurney Korra and also changed her power to 7. So that was why this card was really strong with Karanti. Uh, but now they changed it that the whenever you transform from Bloody Mistress or Gurney Korra, you don't change power. So it works both ways. So if you have one power at Karantir, um, she will stay one power when she transforms into Gurney Korra. But maybe I should talk about the ability first. So Sabbath again, so 25 points on a row or more. At the end of your turn, spawn Gernikora's Fruit, so a 1 power tribe unit, on both sides of this unit and transform yourself into Gernikora. So again, if you're at 1 power, you will stay at 1 power for Gernikora. Gernikora also has an end of turn ability that, at the end of the turn, transform yourself into Bloody Mistress. But that only works if you don't have Sabbath anymore. If you do have Sabbath, Gernikora will boost herself by the amount of Gurney Korra's fruits you have on the board. So the more fruits you have, the stronger Gurney Korra as an engine will be. Gurney Korra's fruits will also be buffed because of course the tribe will keep them growing and growing and growing. So the longer this, these cards stay on the board, the harder it will be for your opponent to stop the steamroll. 
Um, again, we can double up on this card with Garantir. But of course, the one power Gunny Cora will be very, very uh, weak to be destroyed. Uh, so if your opponent has an answer to that, they still can do. But you still have the original Bloody Mistress as well. So this is the strongest card in the deck. If you play two of these, um, you get two engines that buff themselves by the amount of Gurney Koras fruit. You have one with your leader ability, you have four with the two Gurney Koras, so that's five on each card every single turn. Ten points per turn um, without you having to do anything. If you also manage to play Idaran, you can actually triple the Gurney Koras and of course then two more Gurney Koras fruit, so that's seven, 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 21 points in one turn. And Idaran could technically also double up on the fruit that you spawned with your leader ability. So that's 888 is 24 points in one turn. So I'm going to try and see if we can pull off that combo. Chances are slim because there's a lot of control on the ladder to prepare for this deck. But we'll see how that works out. And then our final card is Karate Heatwave. We want to be able to take out something huge if it comes across the board. Uh, at least giving us one answer to uh, something very strong like a full test or something like that a very strong gold engine card that we really need to take out crystal skull as a stratagem so boost by four and give it veil not going to be that handy but it is something at least and then the fruits of isgit is our leader ability you could also go with force of nature giving you three more provisions uh, maybe allowing you to put in um, something like onairomancy to give this deck a bit more consistency but fruits of isgit on order, you spawn a Gurney Corda's fruit on an allied row. And at the start of your turn, you reset this ability if you don't have any fruits left. So this ability works in two directions. You either use it to be destroyed by the Griffin. So you play a fruit, play the Griffin on top of that, nine points for free because the fruit will be reset next turn. Or you just play the fruit and benefit from the thrive on this card. Because a single Gurney Corda's fruit will also trigger twice on Mamuna, which is uh, very interesting. Also, if you play Mamuna from uh, Garantir, that stays the exact same. Um, so yeah, definitely worth spending the... Because uh, the, this is one of the, the abilities that has the lowest provision cost. Um, well, the lowest provision boost that you get, I'm sorry. Uh, so it's the amount of provisions you get on top of the base. So yeah, very important that we benefit from uh, as much as possible from the provisions we could use. Now, let's see this deck in action, shall we? Well, let's go into an example match. And we're facing imprisonment. So yeah, not the best matchup probably because we're gonna try and uh, lock down every single card that we play. But if we're a little lucky, hmm, doesn't seem like it. Lusty isn't really going to be useless, uh, useful unless we want to really get rid of spying units, but probably not the case. So let's get rid of Glusty. We already got Idaran. But other than that, no real good cards. The Purify is probably going to come in handy, so let's get rid of Natural Selection. Necker. Hmm. Not the best lineup. Um, Kiki more Worker? Okay, we got the Defender at least. Um... Yeah, let's start out with the Neckers, because always a pretty good start. Our opponent needs to have two single point hits to take both of them out. Seems to be Sunset Wanderers in our opponent's deck, so that's going to come out at some point. And then we got the Blightmaker, so the Blightmaker is going to take out one of the Neckers with the Mage there. Yeah, that was to be expected. Let's put down the Fruits of Isgit on the same road, trying to build up our Sabbath. And then put the Dragon Larvals down, giving us four tribe units for the price of, yeah, basically two. A Van Morlam Hunter on one of the Andrega Larvals. That is fine, I guess. Um, I'm gonna put down the Beast. Yeah, the Beast goes down. And I'm gonna Crystal Skull on that one Necker. So that's going to give us a beast of at least six, possibly going to eight, but I'm assuming it's going to get locked in a minute. I'm going to try and bait out as many of the locks as possible. We have a 21 point row right now. Uh, that's just been reduced again, but that's not that much of a problem because I think with the Thrive, just quickly counting here. Uh, so that's 19, we're gonna get two Thrive Ticks, so that's just gonna be enough for the Witch Apprentice. So we have Sabbath there, so we calculated that correctly, that's 25, so Sabbath is gonna trigger on the Witch Apprentice. Should've put it before the Beast, so she would go up to five, up to uh, six, and then the Beast will go up higher. But it's no longer relevant. 
because we got destroyed there. Um, let's play the Griffin. We can destroy that locked and Drega larva. It's not a problem at all. And trigger Thrive three more times. And the Witch Apprentice is also going to keep going. Yennefer's Invocation, that was on the Beast. So if you can take out the Beast later on, that would also be nice. And we get Vildeforged. Vildeforged is going to probably pull... Ooh, Self-Eater. Wait, what? Then that pulled the ah the top, not the highest uh, unit on the deck, which is really handy because I actually want to use self eating to just double up and then put Gunky on in between triggering Drive again. Yeah, I think that was uh, more to our benefit than our opponents. I think they're gonna have to uh, end it there. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Because otherwise the Sunset Wonder is, I think was also getting closer. So uh, there we go. We got three more locks, uh, two more locks available on their leader ability, so that's not the best. But if we can get our strongest cards in hand right now, we should be pretty good. Bloody Mistress, always nice. Hmm, let's try and get rid of the m crap here. Um, that's not really necessary in Dwega Larva. I'd rather keep the Purify. And we get Mamuna, this is a perfect hand. I should probably just go for it. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go for it, I think. So Nagelfar, I think, is not gonna guarantee me... Hmm. Nagelfar is not gonna guarantee me a Karantir, but I don't really care. I'm just gonna do it anyway. So, what we're doing is Cave Troll without the fruit. You're gonna see in a minute why. We get a Defender there as well. Wait. Does that mean that they're going to go for uh, K here? I'm assuming they will. Ah, we'll see. We'll see. Let's put down Idaran and a Fruit of Isgit on the back row. And we're gonna get K here now, right? Yeah. Okay, that's good. I tried to bait that out, because now K here is gone. And I'm gonna just pass. That is what was expected and now yeah they don't have so the k here needs to be out there because k here is a perfect counter to what we're doing um because k here get, will get the boosts that we are getting so every boost that we're getting they will get which is basically blocking us off completely okay now i want to get rid of the griffin i'm gonna keep the witch apprentice we got Karanti, which is perfect uh, we can actually keep the Kiki more working to get the Sabbath quicker. Yeah, I think this is pretty good. If not to say almost perfect. So we don't, we're not going to be able to do the Idran can, um, well, tactic. But we're still at equal cards. On Aeromancy goes on to Squirrel. What is Squirrel going to banish? Ooh, I hope they don't banish. Okay, they didn't banish what I thought they were going to banish. Because they could have banished Griffin, and then I would have been annoyed. Um, but right now, this is going to be fun. Because um, we're gonna—I'm gonna show you how to get to Sabbath almost. I think the quickest way you can. Um, so let's put Fruits of Biscuit down. Use Mamuna right there. Trigger Mamuna and get the Griffin. So that's going to pull a griffin out of our deck as well. And that basically gives us a 22 point play in one go. Now we get the beast. The beast I can take out. So that's actually not a problem. Um, now we can actually play Karantir. Um, onto the bloody mistress. So bloody mistress over here. Giving us a gurney Korya. There we go. We still have a purify as well. So keep that in mind. And that the Kingslayer will transform into a beast. Fair enough. And they're gonna yeah, destroy that Gurney Korra. That's not that much of a problem. Um, and then we got the Sunset Wanderers on the field as well. So now, that's still a 29 point row, so I don't need to put Gurney Korra on that same row. So let's put this Gurney Korra over here. Well, Bloody Mistress and then Gurney Korra. So that's a 7 point Gurney Korra. We don't have dominance anymore. And we get locked on the Gurney Korra there. Okay. But remember we still have a lot of Thrive as well. I could put down the Red Catcheress first. That's probably going to give me more benefit than... Uh... So yeah, let's Sabbath. Yeah, let's put down the... Wait, I'm going to have to 
count here. That's still 25, so that's not a problem. The Witch Apprentice is going to start boosting herself as well. That's probably going to be another lock. It's a Purify. And we got locked on the Witch Apprentice. There we go. I still can't purify my own units, which is annoying. I should have probably put down Caretaker as well uh, in the deck, but just for this one thing, that's not going to matter too much. Um, I'm going to Nagelfar now. I'm going to Korati the Sunset Wanderers. Um, I don't think I'm going to get to Sabbath anymore, uh, to Dominance anymore. So that's just going to be nine. Our Kikimore workers are still gonna work. Oh, I can purify something, but that's... I'm just thinking about the sequencing now. I don't think it matters for one drive. So I can't, I can't purify anything on my side of the board, so I'm just gonna have to purify something over there. Uh, the beasts are triggering because they are um, uh, positioned perfectly, by the way. Um, which our opponent did very, very well there, but I don't think it's going to matter. I think we have the upper hand with the amount of drives that we're still going to trigger. There's five drive units on the board, so we're still getting a lot of points per turn. And unless our opponent uh, Z, I think that's enough. I think we have just enough. There we go. The drive did manage to pull out. So even with all the locks that we faced, we actually managed to pull that out. That was really, really good. Whew. Didn't manage to show the entire Idaran um, tactic there, the combo, but uh, hopefully we can do that in the next match then. So next up is Koyatel. Ooh, that might also be problematic, because Koyatel has a lot of damage picks. They're trying to focus on taking our units down. But we're going to have to try and make this work. We have the Defender, we have Idaran, and we have Bloody Mistress already in hand. I'm going to get rid of one of the Andrega Larvas, no need to put two of them. Natural selection is always good to get rid of the, um, what are they called again? The, um, the, the witches that swap rows constantly. Um, Korati Maxi is going to be useless because I have our best cards in hand already. Kikimori Worker could be good. Yeah, because we don't have a Relic Pocket yet for Gankian. Okay. Mamuna. Mamuna. Um, yeah, let's just go... Full on of the drive units in one go, put a fruit on the board and Andrega Larva. You might have noticed if I have a Necker in hand, I'm not using the fruits immediately just to avoid it getting killed, although it doesn't really matter. But um, then we get Dunka. Is Dunka something I want to actually Korati? I think at this stage I do. Although there are bigger cards that I want to Korati, so I'm not going to. Again, the same issue with having too many gold cards in your hand. I don't want to play any of those, so let's just put the Kikimura Worker over here. And end it at that. And then the next one we're going to do is just the Rat Catcher Rats. And then we get the Elven Seer. Ooh. It's that kind of deck. Do I want a natural selection that? Yeah, let's just do that. There we go. Because that is going to give them a second special card. So wait, is this a special card? That, no, okay, there's the Cat Witcher. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Uh, let's put the Rat Catcheress down. Uh, veil her. And then I think I'm going to pass after this, unless our opponent passes, but I'm going to pass regardless. Because those Cat Witchers can be really annoying. Ooh, Brehen. The unexpected Brehen. Um, I'm going to pass. That was just a huge hit. I could do Nagelfar. I don't know how much that's going to help me. I could pull Maxi, potentially. Let's try it. Oof. Oh, mm. Well, it's at least good to get Garantir in hand, but this is basically <laughs> a useless card. I mean, not useless. I get nine points out of it because of the drive, so not that much of a problem, I think. And we get the Dol on our sentry, meaning that they get two points every turn from that, so I definitely need to start passing. And then we get the Dried Matron, there we go. The shuffle, the shuffle combo. One, two, three, four. Yeah, so that's four points every turn. Not something that I really want to counter against. So we, I think we have a perfect hand now. So we have the Defender, we have Mamuna, we have Idaran, we have Bloody Mistress and Karantir. So there's Karantir. We get... Did we now play a Griffin already? I'm going to have to check. 
No, we didn't play a griffin yet. We did play an Andrega larva already. I could just put down a griffin as a nine pointer. The witch apprentice I'm gonna keep as well. So I think this is pretty good. So let's finish redrawing. My opponent goes first, but I can just uh, put down the griffin as my pass card. Um, there we go. Because that means we can use the Mamuna uh, tactic in a minute as well. Which is probably the easiest way to handle this. Now we get Gankian. Maxi is going to be useless, so let's just get rid of Maxi. We get a Necker. Well, a Necker is not going to be good. I want to keep natural selection as well, so um, we get another Indrega Larva. Okay, so we're going to have to use... Hmm. I think the sooner I get this started, the better. I think I'm going to. So... Cave Troll first. Let's hope that sticks. But of course a Karate could take out that Cave Troll immediately or a Purify. It's not the end of the world if it does, but... That's a movement. Okay, one movement. Engine, hmm... I mean, I want to put Idaron down now. But of course, Mamuna is going to force me to play the Griffin. Instead of just... Putting it down normally. Do I play Mamuna first or not? I will see how it goes. Um, let's put Idaran first down uh, and put down the um, double fruits of Isgit. And the next turn we can actually put down the Bloody Mistress over there, which is gonna be tricky, by the way. And the defender gets moved. And now we got Banish on uh, Idaran. That was interesting. That was interesting that they wanted to go for that, uh, which means that I can now actually just do the Mamuna combo. Yeah, let's do that. Um, so Mamuna on the board, that triggers the tribe of the two fruits. And then I'm gonna just put down the Griffin right next to it. And we get Sabbath in one go now, behind the Defender. So that still means we get a double um, Bloody Mistress now. So Bloody Mistress on that row, it's gonna be one point. So if our opponent has a row killing card, like Lacerate or something, that's still gonna hurt. But regardless, it's still a good play. We triggered to Thrive on the two uh, fruits at the bottom as well. Uh, Melina moving... Moving the Matron. Interesting. Uh, natural Selection became almost useless now, but I can actually use Melina. I can actually kill Melina with that. Um, yeah, let's not waste any time. The longer, the sooner we get Bloody Mistress on the field, the better. I can't put it on the front row anymore. I can't put it over here, so that's another uh, Gurnikora. Gurnikora boosting herself by four points, and now it's going to be six points in total. So, we're getting there, we're getting there. The relics aren't perfectly aligned, so the relics aren't in a really good spot, but I can still um, work that out in a minute. I'm going to have to put down the Andrega Larva first. We get... A bunch of orbs of insights, that's perfect, I suppose. And now, of course, yeah, Melina gets protected. And Melina is gonna move. I don't know what Melina is gonna move, the defender again. Okay. Uh, that means that I'm gonna put the Andrega larva in the back here. Like uh, this. There we go. So that is 12 points on those Gurney Coras, by the way, every single turn. So that's um, half the combo. Hmm. So that's starting to look like... Is that going to be boost out by the number of other cards on the row? Okay. Every time, yeah, that's going to keep boosting. Um, which apprentice is going to go down right next to Mamuna now? That's going to trigger all the tribe again. I'm guessing there's going to be an Urden in that in there somewhere, which is lame. But then again, nothing I can uh, do about that. Let's put a Gun Kian over here in between the two relics. That's another nine. We get at 130. But yeah, most of our points are in the back row. So if we click the um, the splitter here, so that's 49 on the front row and 81 on the back row. Even if that gets earned, that's probably going to take out, what, about 40 points? And I can't trigger Thrive anymore, so that's not going to be that much of a problem, I think. Another one of the... 
the fruits are gonna go over there, but I think they're expecting me to play more cards. I'm not gonna play more cards anymore. So that's 60, 70. Unlock a unit and move it to the other row. Okay. Fair enough, I guess. I'm just gonna use natural selection on whatever I wanna do. So I'm not gonna play more cards, but yeah, look at what that Gurney Core can do. I'm pretty sure Erden is gonna pop up now, uh, taking out most of the points in the back row. But regardless, this has been really good. I haven't seen... Why are they not using Gazeras? There's Erden. So Erden taking out all those points, but we're still ahead by quite a bit. And of course those Gurney Cores are still going to boost themselves, by the way. And they put the Defending back, so I don't think that's going to help us very much. Uh, them very much, so that, there goes the 11 points. And we're going to get another... Uh, yeah, with the Witch Apprentice as well. That's uh, 14 points every single turn. So 97 points, even though, 97 points, even though we got earned. So that's a lot of more points, but uh, not enough. I think they missed Gazrels. Um Yeah, they, they clearly missed Gazrels. That was sad for them, but even with Gazrels, I would have uh, Coralteed Gazrels then. So it wouldn't have made that much of a difference. But uh, yeah, that was against uh, Squirtle movement. So if you can, if, you, if they leave the, those cards alive, they're just gonna steamroll all over the place. So I think those two matches clearly exemplified how strong this deck can be. Again, if you're not expecting to face a lot of a um, mirror matches, you can take out Glusty for something else. Um, there's plenty of nine uh, provision cards that could fit that slot. Uh, you could even just go for uh, Caretaker, because Caretaker is a relic that you can purify a bit more. Or just go for Imlerith's Rod, for example, because Imlerith's Rod is also a very strong card if you want to take something out. But with Karate, most of the time, that's not going to be necessary. Um, but yeah, this deck is just hugely strong. And I know Idaran is usually seen as a meme card. I think in this case, you've seen that a few times. They want to try and take out Idaran as quickly as possible, and they waste tall removal cards on that. Uh, like Karati, um, just something very big that they want to try and take out. You, you see that happen all the time, but that gives you the opportunity to then use Karanti on Bloody Mistress, use the Bloody Mistress again, use Mamuma. All those cards are just free at that point because most of their uh, counter cards are going to be gone because of Idaran. And Idaran always gives you value. If you play Idaran before you play Fruits of Isgit, your leader ability, you get an extra one. And you just saw how powerful that was. That could be. If you have two Gurney Cores on the field, both of them boost by six every single time. And that was 12 points every turn. Even though we got earned on an entire row, that was still 97 points. It would have been way more if we didn't get earned there. But uh, yeah, this deck is still immensely powerful. And the uh, Griffin, um, the Griffin combo with Mamuna is also very strong, as you saw. If you manage to play Mamuna before Sabbath, you just pull that Griffin out, and the Griffin doesn't need to destroy anything. So so that's just a, um, I think that's so 11 and 9, so the 20 point play in one go. With the Fruits of Iskit, that's 22. Um, basically setting you up for Sabbath in a single turn on the next one. So uh, that is the Who Has My Money deck. Because yeah, I just, I just like that pun. It's also really funny, but because of, I made that stupid pun in the, uh, the, the deck name here, um, I've been stuck with the uh, Bitch Better Have My Money uh, song. <laughs> for quite some time now so it's it's uh, not been to my benefit to have that uh, that that wordplay in there but that was the who has my mana deck uh, it's it's a really cool deck even with the gurney Cora nerf it's just very very strong uh, as you saw in the example matches a lot of um, decks now tech against this deck uh, on the ladder so you'll see more than most than not northern realms uh, Nilfgaard, Squirtel as we saw in this uh, in this run as well just a lot of those deck trying to counter this monster deck because it's still immensely powerful I don't think um, the nerfs were enough to make it just on par with everything else but if you face a lot of control especially in the, um, northern realms siege uh, you're gonna get destroyed um, otherwise most of the other decks are pretty Free, as you saw, even with an Urden, if you play your cards on both rows, even with with the row manipulation, we still manage to pull out on top. Um, so yeah, let me know what you think about this deck. It's not the standard deck. I know it's not the standard Gurney Core deck that you've seen so far, because I don't even have the uh, Crones of Crookback Bog in the deck. Um, so it's a little bit different, but I feel like it's better for it. The addition of the Beast, the Ratcatcheress, um, Idaran, and then of course Karate Heatwave is just 
a better combination to my mind than just those three relict crones. It doesn't rely too much on having constantly only relics. I only have one self eater as well, just for for a, a nice pocket for Gankian. Um, but yeah, I feel like this setup was a little bit better than what I've seen so far. But yeah, let me know what you think of this deck in the comment section down below. Do you have any tips to make this deck even better than it already is? Let me know as well, because that's what we're here for after all, trying to help each other out. So thank you enormously for watching, and I hope to see you in the next episode of Gwentich. Goodbye, and stay nutty.